Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Sunday, September 25th, 2022. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with ratings news. Friday Night SmackDown averaged 2.38 million viewers in the Fast National ratings, up from last week's overnight number of 2.086 million viewers, according to Spoiler TV. In the 18-49 year old demo, the preliminary numbers showed the Fox program scoring a .5 rating in the first hour and a .6 in the second hour. Numbers for AEW Rampage Grand Slam on TBS Friday night were unavailable as of press time, but will update you as they become available. Meanwhile, Thursday's impact on Access TV averaged 82,000 viewers according to Show Buzz Daily, up from 67,000 viewers on average last week. The rating in the 18 to 49 demo was a .01. In other television news, WWE and Hulu agreed to extend their contract agreement until next Tuesday, according to PW Insider. Hulu and WWE are in continuing discussions that would keep WWE's next day broadcast rights for Raw, NXT, Main Event, and other USA Network-based properties like Miz and Mrs. on the streaming service. Majority owned by Disney, Hulu was originally to have removed WWE's content on Saturday, but a graphic now shows September 27th as the date that it would be taken down. SmackDown, which airs on Fox, is not a part of the negotiations and will remain on Hulu regardless of what decision is made on the other programming. WWE's NXT brand was on the road Saturday night and featured the reuniting of Sangha and Veer Mahan as a tag team. Sangha and Mahan defeated Andre, Chase, and Bodie Hayward, which marked the first time since January of 2021 that the pair had teamed. Initially named Indus Share, the team was managed by Malcolm Bivens until Veer's call-up to Raw in May of 2021. The house show took place in Citrus Springs, Florida, at the Community Center, and featured Mandy Rose successfully defending her NXT Women's Championship against Nikita Lyons, along with Braun Breaker, Edra Sanofe, and Malik Blade defeating the Schism. NXT's Weekend of House shows began Friday night at the Havert L. Fenn Center in Fort Pierce. The main event of that show saw NXT champion Braun Breaker team with Apollo Crews to defeat J.D. McDonough and Grayson Waller. The crew is back on the road next week, with shows on September 30th and October 1st in Tampa and Dade City, Florida, respectively. Speaking of NXT. When Paul Levesque took over as head of creative for WWE, rumors swirled about the possibility of Patrick Clark, better known as the Velveteen Dream, returning to the company. Those rumors proved not to pan out, and according to a report from Fightful on Saturday, there was never any interest to begin with. One office source described Clark as needing a miracle to return to the company, and that it would be, quote, a public relations nightmare. The former North American champion was released by the company, in December 2020, after a tumultuous tenure in which he was very successful on screen but had numerous incidents outside the ring, including reportedly rankling both the locker room and his coaches with his behavior. Twice in early 2020, Clark was accused of inappropriate social media interactions with minors, which included two separate alleged incidents of sending indecent images. No criminal charges were ever filed, and WWE said an investigation turned up no wrongdoing. Just last month, Clark was arrested in Florida twice in the span of six days. On August 20th, he was picked up for misdemeanor first-degree battery and trespassing after allegedly getting into a fight and biting an employee of a fitness center in Orlando. On August 26th, he was arrested again when the August 20th incident violated his probation stemming from an April 2022 conviction on cocaine possession. A court hearing scheduled for September 28th relating to the August 20th arrest was canceled on September 19th and charges against Clark were dropped due to the prosecution not believing they had enough of a case to convict. Turning to the NWA, Tyrus was added to the NWA World Championship match taking place at the company's Hard Times 3 pay-per-view coming up November 12th in Chalmette, Louisiana. Tyrus relinquished his NWA television championship on the newest edition of NWA USA, the company's streaming program, in order to turn the match against champion Trevor Murdoch 
and Matt Cardona into a three-way. In the NWA, once the television champion has made seven consecutive successful title defenses, they are able to cash in the title in return for a World Heavyweight Championship shot. Tyrus failed to wrest the championship from Murdoch at last month's NWA 74th anniversary show. Murdoch had won the title on June 11th in a fatal four-way match after Cardona was forced to vacate due to tearing his bicep during a GCW show on May 28th. In contract news, Fightful Select reported on Saturday morning that Chicago-based wrestler Sky Blue is officially under a deal with the company. The 22-year-old has been regularly booked in AEW since making her debut in the company against Dr. Britt Baker in April of 2021, mostly appearing on Dark and Elevation, although she's also had several matches on Rampage, with the most recent coming on the August 13th edition of the program, where she teamed with Dante Martin in a losing effort against AAA Mixed Tag Team Champions Sammy Guevara and Ty Mello. Fightful noted that while her exact contract status is unknown, when promoters have reached out to Blue for bookings, they've been told they have to have them cleared through AEW. Turning to Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling held the final show of their Burning Spirit Tour today at Kobe's World Memorial Hall, and the main event of the program saw Will Ospreay defeat David Finley in 28 minutes and 23 seconds after two Stormbreakers to retain the IWGP United States Heavyweight title. After the match, Tetsuya Naito came down to the ring to offer a challenge to Osprey, but was interrupted by Zack Sabre Jr., who challenged Naito for New Japan's Royal Quest 2 show in London on October 2nd. The winner of that match will go on to get an opportunity for the U.S. title, likely at the company's upcoming Sumo Hall show on October 10th. During the press conference after the show, which aired on New Japan World, Osprey made an open challenge for London. Big Billy Bollocks over here. Billy go. Don't worry, boys. Strap it on my back. I'll fucking get us there. Don't you worry. But you know what? No, you know what makes me the best in the world, though? I don't have a day off. I still feel good. I'll strap these fingers up. I'm requesting a singles match in London. Anybody. Royal Quest 2. Let's give the hometown boy the big send up. Let's say hello to the hometown boy. Show New Japan the star that they have in their presence. It's about time the world started seeing my era of New Japan. We'll take this to America. We'll take it to England. We'll take it to Australia. We'll take it to New Zealand. Hell, take me to South Africa. I'd love to go see a great white shark. Sharks are sick. Whoever it is, Naito, oh, Zach Zabie Jr. It isn't about the flag that is on this belt. It is about the work ethic that I put behind it. No one works harder than me, boys. I look forward to the challenge. Now, if you don't mind, guess what I've got to do? I've got to fly to Tokyo, like now. Ninja Band fans, Thank you very much for supporting the United Empire. It means the world to me, because you guys actually understand what class and pro wrestling should look like. It's to the future. See you in a bit, dickheads. Carl Anderson defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi to retain the never open weight title. After the match, Anderson's Bullet Club partners, led by IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Jay White, came down to the ring to continue their assault on Tanahashi. Tama Tonga, who faces White for the title on October 10th, then came down to help fight off the heels. After Tonga cleaned house on the other Bullet Club members and had White all to himself, his brother Hikuleo, who's also a Bullet Club member, came down to the ring. It looked as if Hikuleo would attack his brother, but instead turned on White and threw him into a gun stun from Tonga, which left the champion laying. What you gonna do now, Tama? What you gonna do now, huh? I'm his family now! It's all about this! It's all about this! Bullet Club is his family! No! What? Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Next Blood is thicker than money! 
The crowd pop you heard at the end of that clip was when Hikuleo and Tonga embraced. The other title match on the show saw Francesco Akira and TJP defeat Raisuke Taguchi and Master Wato to retain the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles when Akira pinned Taguchi. In Pro Wrestling Noah, the company ran to Goya today at Dolphins Arena in a show that was aired on their Wrestle Universe streaming service. The main event saw Keito Kiyomiya defeat Keno to win the GHC Heavyweight Championship. Afterwards, Kiyomiya challenged Kazuyuki Fujita to be his next opponent. The semi-main event featured Keiji Muto in one of his last remaining matches before he retires in February of 2022. Muto teamed with Fujita to defeat Masakatsu Funaki and Katsuhiko Nakajima when Muto pinned Nakajima after hitting his patented Shining Wizard knee strike. In other title matches on the show, Takashi Sugiyara and Satoshi Kojima knocked off Hideki Suzuki and Timothy Thatcher to win the GHC Tag Team Championship, Hayata defeated Yohei to retain the GHC Junior Heavyweight title, after the match Ninja Mac announced himself as Hayata's next challenger, and Atsushi Katoge and Seiki Yoshioka upended Yoshinori Ogawa and Chris Ridgway to win the GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles. Stardom ran their second pay-per-view this week in Shinjuku today as a part of the ongoing five-star Grand Prix tournament. Tournament match winners included Hanan and Suzu Suzuki. The annual event wraps up on October 1st. Also taking place on the show, DDT wrestler Yuna Manase and longtime veteran Nane Takahashi made surprise appearances teaming with Yu to defeat Suyuri Utamihai Shishida and Lady C. Later, a promo was played of alpha female Jazzy Gabert announcing that she, Yu, Manase, and Takahashi have formed the Neo Stardom Army to wage war on the new faces of the company. In 2011, Takahashi became the company's first ever World of Stardom champion, losing it to Gabert in 2013. Gabert would eventually drop the belt to Io Shirai, who now performs in WWE as Io Sky. Based in Germany, Gabert is part of the tournament to crown the first IWGP Women's Champion. The tournament begins October 2nd in New Japan's Royal Quest 2 show in London. And in DDT, Kazusada Higuchi successfully defended the KOD title today against Kanosuke Takeshita. After the match, Higuchi was challenged by Yukio Sakaguchi to be his next title defense on October 23rd. Takeshita will be returning to the United States in October to work independent dates as well as returning to AEW. Our final report today will contain some spoilers for upcoming Impact Wrestling Television. These will not be full results, but some newsworthy items that occurred during these tapings. If you wish to not hear any of these spoilers, we'll give you a moment to make your decision. And please, remember to follow us across all of our forums of social media. Impact Wrestling held television tapings on Saturday at the Skyway Studios in Nashville, the company's first coming off Friday's Victory Road pay-per-view. During the event, Masha Slamovich defeated Ali Catch in a Monsters Ball match, as well as being involved in a contract signing with Knockouts champion Jordan Grace, which got physical. The two will face off at Impact's next pay-per-view, Bound for Glory, on October 7th. Delirious made his second appearance in Impact in a losing effort against AAA wrestler Black Taurus. The former Ring of Honor booker also lost an X Division title match against Speedball Mike Bailey on Friday night, which marked his first appearance with the company since June of 2005. Also at the tapings, Brian Myers defended his digital media championship over Crazy Steve and issued an open challenge for the pay-per-view. Juice Robinson defeated Alex Zane, and Steve Macklin defeated Moose in a match where Sammy Callahan was the special referee and attacked both men. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast and remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. 
And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.